Hey everybody, Freddy Wong, fastest gun in the West, here to talk to you about editing keyboard shortcuts. Yeah! What we're gonna be talking about today are the keyboard shortcuts that I personally use for Adobe Premiere. And although we're gonna be speaking about sort of my set and this specific program, the principles that we're gonna be talking about can apply to any editing program, provided you can edit those hotkeys. So I would recommend for you to follow along, and if you wanna change it up or make slight variations, by all means, go for it. What's important is that what you come up with makes sense to you. So before we get into this, why bother with doing this? Why bother learning it? Why bother customizing it? You want to be focused on the story that you're telling. You want to be focused on the thing that you're editing, and you don't want to be distracted from that. By placing the commands that you use right at your fingertips, and by being able to access that quickly, you're going to be able to edit faster. You're going to be able to edit at the speed at which you think things, which I call like, sort of editing at the speed of your own thoughts. Uh, it will make you a better editor because you can focus on editing and not any of the other crap uh, that has nothing to do with the story that you're trying to tell. So let's get into it. What we're going to be looking at today as an example project is something that the Rocky Jet Film School shot, a little horror short they did last Halloween called The Horn. There's not a lot of shots here, but it'll give us enough material to kind of allow me to demonstrate the thinking and principles behind why I lay out the keyboard the way I do and hopefully give you some ideas for how you can do the same. First things first, when we talk about keyboard shortcuts, we can really kind of break down our commands into three separate categories, which is navigation, how you move around on your, on your timeline, commands, uh, the actual things that you do to the footage, and then fine tuning, which is after you get the rough stuff in, massaging in your edits. So we're going to start here with navigation. When you're looking at your timeline, one of the most common things that you do is to zoom in and zoom out. And a lot of times you'll see people, they'll, you know, they'll find the magnifying glass tool and they'll click, and then they zoom out, they'll hold down option and click out. You can basically condense all that into what I use uh, here, which is Z and Shift Z. And this is zoom in on playhead and zoom out from playhead. And the reason why that's important is that you're only really worried about where your playhead is. You don't ever have to zoom in on a section of the timeline that you're not looking at with your playhead. So I have Z punch in and zoom in on it and Shift Z zoom out. And the reason why I do that here is one, Z is easy to remember, but also this keeps everything on the left side of the keyboard. The most sort of used commands are all on my left hand. So here Z is just my pinky or my ring finger, punching in and punching out. And I can just go in like this. And again, I'm not hunting all over the keyboard for it, it's all just underneath uh, my hand. The other thing, I use ANS for jump to previous edit and jump to next edit. And what they'll do is it'll go to the next edit points that it finds. So now, to get to the end of this, I'm using ANS to just pop through to all the cuts. This is super duper useful because it allows you to get to a cut point uh, and the places that you've already placed edits very, very quickly. When you're at the edit point, sometimes you wanna go back and forth frames at a time. So I use E and R, which lie right under my index and middle fingers to step back and step forward one frame. I also then do Shift E and Shift R to step back many and step forward many. Uh, you can define what that interval is and five frames is usually pretty good. I think that's the default. And this is all here, one hand, not having to worry with it. So that's A and S to pop around, find your edit points. E and R, single frame at a time, which is definitely helpful to fine tune where exactly your playhead is. And Shift E and Shift R to step around and jump around. You can hold it a little bit, you can pop back and forth and sort of fast forward and rewind through your timeline pretty quickly here. A and S, E and R, Z, and Shift Z are your sort of default moving around keys that I use. And again, all right under my left hand allows you to zoom around my timeline pretty quickly. Now, uh, let's get into editing commands. All right! So normally, when you're editing, what I see a lot of people do, they'll go find their blade tool, they'll click it, they'll click and f make a cut there, and maybe you have to do it twice, switch back to their pointer tool, select this clip, delete it, and then either drag everything over or use the select all forward. And, and Anyway, we're talking about 20 commands here already. And the first thing you should always think of whenever you're starting to do a lot of the commands and a lot of stuff that you repeat, how can you make it more efficient? So in this case, what I do is this. Adding an edit to where your playhead is is a very important thing. Again, you don't, you're not going to just cut anywhere outside your playhead willy-nilly. You know, we, we want to know what you're looking at. So for me, it's very simple. B, which I remember as blade tool, B adds edit and add edit to all tracks. So I should have those to B and Shift B. That's a pretty common thing they'll do. It's trimming heads and tails off of clips that are too long. And the command is called ripple trim next edit to playhead or previous edit to playhead. And I have those bound to F and D respectively. So what that means is when I hit F here, it's going to take the next edit point ahead of me here, which is right here, which is when it cuts the next shot, 
and it's going to basically trim everything from this side back to where my playhead is. It's very simple because I just hit this and all of a sudden that whole area pops back to it. Super duper helpful in terms of being able to just quickly get to a point and say, okay, she gets out of the car and then the next shot goes right there. Ripple trim is a super duper good tool for that. Let's say we have a shot here. I'm gonna artificially uh, change this here where the shot is now too long at the beginning, same thing. Okay, I have her here getting out of the door and stepping out. So I'm gonna wait here and then she's gonna be getting out right about there. So I'm gonna say right about here, D will trim the previous edit back and bring everything from where my playhead is back from the previous edit point. So now when I play it through, I get I have an edit point that I can now get in and really dig into if it does if it doesn't quite work but that gets me closer in terms of uh, of rough editing DNF ripple trim so a lot of times for me when I when I start out with uh, with a project and I want to just start roughing stuff in I'll take a clip that I like I'll give an in and out point to it and then I'll use these are these are avid commands actually V and shift V V inserts the clip into the timeline and shift V overwrites it so again, using that, I can kind of just very, I mean, I'm just kind of doing it willy nilly here, but you can just sort of very roughly be like, okay, it cuts to that and then cut to, cut to this and then put that in. And then that's a very quick way of populating the timeline. And then that'll allow you then to come back in and fine tune where those edits are. So a lot of times you will need to use the mouse in terms of navigating and moving stuff around. And what I've done is G, uh, which is again right under my index finger here, which I'll do for my selection tool and allows me to click and select things and double click and get into the effects and change up things or whatever I need to do with the mouse. Uh, a lot of times you'll, you want to select everything in front of your playhead or everything in front of where you're clicking. And what I do for that is actually bind shift G to select track forward. <laughs> That's going to allow you to select everything so if you have multiple audio tracks, you can just select everything, drag it around, clear out some space for the stuff that you need to do. And then that way, when you're done with it, you hit G again, you're back to the arrow tool. Look out! So after you have some of these cuts in place, you're going to want to fine tune them. And what I do here is there's a trim tool in, uh, in Premiere, which allows you to fine tune these cuts very quickly. It's not as good as a trim tool in Avid, but arguably, if you ask a lot of editors, nothing is as good as a trim tool in Avid. So when your playhead is on an edit, Hitting T will turn into trim mode. There's multiple modes here when you talk about the trim tool and shift T is bound to toggle trim modes. Basically, you can see here pop between the various types of trims there are. So I have Q and W bound to trim backward and trim forward and that's specifically for when you're in the trim tool mode. Uh, and shift Q and shift uh, W to trim back many, shift forward many. So if you take a look here, so this is one type of trim. So with Q and W, I can basically find out exactly where I want this particular clip to start. So finally, let's talk about nudging stuff around, moving clips around. A lot of times, let's say we have something up on here in the second track, and we wanna sort of adjust where this thing starts relative to uh, the track below it. It's a pain to get in there and move it with your mouse with all the snapping and everything. So I have X and C bound to nudge forward and back one frame and shift X and shift C to uh, bound to nudging forward and back many frames. Again, you'll notice shift is always used as kind of either a modifier or uh, an amplifier of what I'm doing. So if, if a command does one frame, oftentimes uh, shift of that command will do multiple frames. So let's say I want to slide this back and nudge it back, hitting X and C now and shift X and shift C allows me to kind of just jump around and move it to where I need to be. A lot of times too, you'll be in a situation where you wanna move a clip up and down based on the timeline, uh, the layers that you have. So I bind Shift A and Shift S to nudging up and nudging down. And what that does is it nudges this uh, clip up and down on the timeline. Super duper useful, A and S and X and C. That'll do it. I hope you have enjoyed this very sort of brief look into uh, the way that I set up my keyboard. And again, just because it's the way I set it up doesn't mean it's the way you should. Most people here in the office have different ways uh, of doing it and it all makes sense uh, to them. And as long as what you have set up makes sense to you, uh, and it allows you to work quickly and it's intuitive to you, that's the way you should. Always be on the lookout also for places that you can be more efficient with the way that you edit. and. Soon, hopefully, you get to a point where you're not ever having to hunt around for all the tools that you need. And for example, like this thing here, this panel, I don't need the tool panel no more. I got the tool panel right here in my left hand. That's, that's, that's how you can do it.
Anyway, thanks everybody. Thanks for watching this video and do check out the uh, short, which uh, I didn't edit, uh, but it is on the uh, Rocket Jump Film School uh, site. It's a horror short. It's called The Horn. That's what we were working with uh, here today. And if I was editing it, it probably would have done a little bit faster, right? So we know that was a lot of information, so we've written it all out for you right here. Click this link to download the overview of Freddy's Keys to help clear up any questions you may have. And if you still don't know how to edit, don't worry. We'll go through the various editing tools in greater detail in a later video. Lastly, if you use Premiere, we have Freddy's keyboard shortcuts for you to download and install directly. Right there. Thanks. Good luck.